Hey guys, just put in at the Sawbill Canoe Outfitters, entry point number 38. Got a gorgeous day here. Gonna do a six day trip, trying to try and do the Frost River Loop. Uh, six days, five nights, weather looks gorgeous the whole time. High in the 70s, lows 40 to 50, and later on this week, on Friday, they're saying like a 40% chance rain. Far on that, should be a good trip. A little busy at the outfit this morning, not too bad. There are about uh, a group of uh, three canoes ahead of me. But other than that, it uh, looks real quiet out here. It's a gorgeous day, no wind, and hopefully make it up to a frost lake this evening. So I've already made a couple mistakes. One is that my map is way up in the front, but I got a couple guys ahead of me. I'm just gonna follow them to the first portage. I got a good idea where it is anyway. Also, I put my pack a little too close and I'm splashing water on it. Won't be a big deal, not getting that much water, but it should be able to keep it all clear. Also, my sunscreen is buried and I'm gonna have to dig that out because I already have my sweatshirt off already and I've been paddling for 10 minutes. But anyway. Take a look at the lake, how nice it is though. Just perfect out here today. It's glass. The wind will really kill you on a canoe trail. That's the worst thing. Rain is okay, but wind, you, can, you won't be able to move sometimes. So, I'm really fortunate. The five day forecast or six day forecast, the worst day was like nine mile an hour winds or something like that. So that's pretty rare not to have one wind a day. But it's looking good so far, so. Anyway, I'll get back once you get to uh, a couple portages in. Like I said, I got uh, maybe 400 rods of portages today. Maybe, um, you know, three or four. Around, they're all around 100. Nothing too long. I think the longest is 180 today. So it shouldn't be too bad. But we'll see. See how the first couple go. I'm going to try and single carry, so we'll see how that works. I'll at least do it for the first one. I think the second one might kind of be a rocky, muddy minefield. So we'll see what happens on that one. Well, it's about 11 o'clock now. I got two portages down, two 80 rod portages. Uh, single carried both of them. It went pretty well. First one was real easy, nice and flat. Second one had a couple up and down, but nothing too bad. I think this next one, I'm gonna try and do a double portage. I'm on uh, Sitka Lake, I think. Eight of, eight of the Sitka. And uh, it used to be a one rod pullover beaver dam it's not anymore i guess the beaver dam's gone so the water's too low or vice versa i'm not sure anyway i guess it's real rocky and everything so i'll probably single carry that but it's about 11 o'clock so we've been going at it well, about two and a half hours almost so making pretty good progress unloading and loading the canoes taking a little bit longer than i like but other than that it's uh going real good wind maybe kicked up to five miles an hour out of the uh southeast but nothing bad at all Enough to keep the bugs away. Haven't got any bugs yet, so that's good. Haven't seen any loons yet either, so we'll see if we see some of those later. I don't know when they come out, but... Anyway, yeah, I just took off my life jacket for a paddle across these short legs because it's hot out. Um, sweating pretty good already. Uh, I'm glad I'm wet footing it up here. I was going to wear some uh, rubber boots, but I'm really glad I didn't because it did would have been way too hot for that. Anyway, I do see another group up here, so hopefully they can find the portages and tell me where it is. I passed that other group, they were double carrying, or double portaging, so pass them up. And uh, we got this 100 rod, and then a 180 into Cherokee, into a creek, and then into Cherokee. So those are, and then we won't have another portage for quite a long time from unloading the frost, like I think it's like 130. But uh, I think the 180 rod up ahead is pretty hilly, so we'll see how that one goes. I'll try and single carry, but if I can, I can't. Well, made it to uh, Cherokee Creek. The wind's kind of picked up just a little bit. I only, uh, the one portage I was worried about before, it was bad. It was rocks, it was mud. I sunk into my knee at one point. I actually had to drop the canoe and just single carry on that one eventually. Uh, I tried my best, but it just wasn't worth it. And then now, actually I'm trying to find my way through this creek here. Fork in the road. Um, just an island, I guess. Uh, so now I just keep going 
on the Cher Cher or Cherokee Creek, hitting a tree here. The wind is kind of in my face right now, so it's kind of hard to turn through all this stuff. But I uh, know I did the uh, 180 rod uh, from uh, Sitka into Cherokee. I was able to single carry that. It's probably about my limit, uh, but it worked out fine. It's been fairly busy on the portages. You know, kind of ran the same drift a couple times, especially on that 100 rod one that we all double carried on. Uh, that one was in pretty rough shape after that one. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to head on to Cherokee Lake and uh, get some lunch. See how that looks. Let me show you a picture of what the creek looks like here. Neat little paddle down here. Cherokee Creek, and then Cherokee's a fairly long lake. Probably take me about an hour and a half to get to the north end. And then uh, I think just one 140, like a real short one in the Gordon Lake, then a 140 into uh, Frost Lake, I think, and that's about it, Portage. So I think the hard work's over for today, but I gotta pump some water once I get out to, the, I'm gonna pump water when I get to the main lake and I'm getting pretty dehydrated here. I'm drinking off. And then get the lunch on Cherokee. Well, got the first beaver dam pull over the trip. I had to hop out and uh, pull myself over that thing. I didn't realize that was here. No bracing either. I think with this many people coming through this way, there'd be somewhere you could just pal right over it, but nothing. Anyway, made it through without a hitch. Looks like prime moose country, but. Nothing so far. Uh, a couple of beavers, I assume. Something was diving underneath the water as I paddled by. But I never got a good glimpse of them. Something above me. Not an eagle, though. Just a hawk. Haven't seen any bald eagles. I haven't seen any seen any loons yet either. I really hope they come out tonight, but we'll see. I don't know when they migrate back up. I think they'd be here by now, but I'm not sure. The ice only went out a week ago maybe up here, but it's been really, I mean, the end of April, I think they said they had 40 inches, but it got really, really warm really, really fast. So kind of weathered the 180 up here, but I was a little nervous about my trip. I know a lot of places in Minnesota you couldn't fish for fishing opener because it was still iced up. But that's fine, everything's open now. The water's not, doesn't feel cold at all. Oh, it is hot out here too. But. So it feels like every now and again I do get a gust of wind coming right down this river. I don't know if it's just because we're kind of in a valley here or if Cherokee's going to be bad, but we'll see when we get out there, I guess. Coming right in my face, I'm coming straight from the east. Well, here it is. This is Cherokee Lake. Looking out straight ahead. It doesn't look that big, but it is. There's just a lot of islands. It'll probably take me about an hour and a half, you know, to paddle all the way to the north end where I need to go. Um, I'm gonna stop somewhere for lunch. There's a lot of good, uh, really good island sites, I guess. I don't know, I've only stayed here once, but this is kind of a destination lake for a lot of people. Everyone I passed today was, was coming here. Um, I finally did get ahead of everybody. I think everyone started 20 minutes before me or so and they were all double portage and I was able to single portage so I haven't seen anybody since I started up the creek. Um, it took me right about four hours to get here. So if you're double portaging maybe had an hour out of that, maybe five or maybe say even six hours or something. I was able to single portage most of it so it saved a little bit of time. But anyway, yeah, I got a little bit of a breeze now. Feels like it's at my back a little bit, southeast wind or so. So it's kind of helping me out, pushing me along. But I'm gonna find an island campsite, maybe, and uh, grab some lunch. This is kind of neat up here. This is a campsite. It's got like two huge rocks. Just looks like someone set them there, but obviously that's not how it happened. But there's this one right down by the shore. Not like they got bulldozers back here or anything. 
I don't know how the heck that thing got there. Kind of crazy. It's like that rock. That one up there is protecting the fire pit. This one down here is just, you know, got there somehow. Well, one last portage I hope before I hit Frost Lake. Uh, it says a 140 and then a 40, but I think I read that you can actually uh, paddle the 40. It's just along the river, so hopefully that's the case. And I got a log in front of me. Oh man, Let's see if it'll sink if I hit it. Stopped for about an hour for lunch on Cherokee and uh yeah, right now it's about 3.20 or so. Been going at it since around 8.30, 8.45. So, made pretty decent time, about what I expected. Didn't go as well as I could have, I guess. I gotta figure out how the heck I'm gonna get out of here. I wanna get the, my side in the shallow end, but that might not be possible. Kinda see what the portage trail looks like here. Uh, that's why I kind of wanted to double carry. I didn't really need hills at this point in the day, but oh well, what can you do? I am definitely about done for the day. Probably one of my longest days up here. But it went as well as expected. Had a real nice tailwind on Cherokee. Uh, really helped me along. Saw Bill was calm this morning. So that helped me a lot too. But uh, yeah, my shoulders are feeling it. Up the hill we go. I'm really hoping that last 40 rodder is one you can just paddle the river. I think that's what I heard. And then, tomorrow, the fun begins. That's the Frost River. A lot of little porridges, real remote. I haven't seen many people at all since I got on Cherokee. Once I got north of there, I did just see somebody across the way, campers. But I think I've seen two People at their campsite since I got on Cherokee, no canoes at all. People just a tent or so. And then, uh, some stuff you gotta watch out for. Right here, you never know how deep it is. That's the problem. Earlier I sunk down to my knee in something that looked okay. Ooh, look at that. 
moose track. That'd be cool to see a moose. I've yet to see a Minnesota moose. I've seen them in Wyoming and Utah, but never in Minnesota. So, Frost River is probably your best bet, just because it's so remote. I think these are more moose tracks. Aren't they? Oh, no, never mind. Those are human footprints. Well, maybe not that one. Right there. Huh. That's cool. Yeah. I'm not the only one using the portage, I guess. So that's good. Anyway. Hopefully tonight, oh, I'm gonna get to camp. And then uh, Frost Lake isn't that big. I'm gonna camp on the western end, I think. It's got some sand beaches, but it's also got lake trout. So I hope to go for some lake trout tonight. I've never caught one before. So, well, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'll give her the best shot. Anyway. <sighs> yeah, this one's a little hilly. Not too bad walking, though. As long as it's uh, not muddy and huge boulders anymore. Now it's a nice path. And here we go. This is what I like. Yeah, walk all day on this stuff. Right here, look at this boulder. And then up there, there's a tree growing out of it. How's it impossible? I see stuff like this all the time up here. Well, it was flat for a little bit. And maybe since we're going downhill, we're getting near the water again? Could such a thought. Just saw another real nice moose track right along the portage. But, ouch, it almost fell too. That's why it's a little muddy still and slippery. I'll be watching out for these rocks. You see the hill behind me there. Oh, and everything's wet right now. Oh boy. Definitely smart to double port it just one. It would have been tough, tough going. Could have done it, just not, I don't want to do it this late in the day. I mean, it's been well so far today, so I don't need to hurt myself on the last walk. There's a tree blocking my path. Get out of the way, tree. tree down up ahead. It's not blocking anything though. Yeah, up there. It's actually kind of a neat portage. A lot of variety. I don't know, it's either rocky or muddy or level. This one's got a little bit of everything. Someone put a, little, a nice little log across here for us. If I don't fall. Oh, this is going to be fun with the canoe I bet. Jeez. mess you know they haven't got much rain up here either I don't think oh man as long as I could think into my knee if I'm not careful well, it seems pretty solid underneath I got my paddle out here to test it Look at this crap that's not too bad I don't feel like sinking again today Ooh, cold. that's cold water too holy cow must be a runoff from somewhere. Jeez. Ah. Ah. Well, I didn't need this. One of the last portages of the day. Kind of wanted an easy one. Look at that rock. 
Look at all these trees growing out of this stuff. Not nuts. At some point, someone built a little boardwalk for us. Sites right here, end of the portage. So I think this is called uh, Unload Lake. I think it's a real quick paddle. And like I said, I hope we don't have to portage. I thought I read somewhere that you didn't have to portage at all. My God, you can look out there. That is moose country for sure. Nothing wrong. I thought I saw something off to my left, but definitely wasn't a moose. Something smaller. Anyway, this is it. Looks pretty cool. Porridge wasn't too bad. It was pretty flat. It wasn't all muddy and everything either. Some parts were almost like a nice little walking path. Okay, get just pack off, go back, get the canoe, and hopefully there's it for porridge today. Well, there's the last one of the day. Quick beaver dam pullover. Pretty high though, about four feet or whatever. Um, also, the wind seems to have done a 180, so it's out of the west now. I was planning on going to the western shoreline, but I think I'll just hit up the eastern shoreline and be done for a day. Um, wind's not blowing too bad, but it's enough that I want to deal with it. Well, I made it to camp. Uh, west side of frost right now. I just got a little fire going. And uh, actually, it's dying. I'm letting it die out. It's kind of windy out here right now. And I got the old uh, Mountain House Chili Mac with beef. And then I'll show you what we did today. So we started here at Sawbill. And then we ran all the way up uh, 80 rod there. Another 80 rod. That one right there, that was the bad one. That was the uh, 100 rod mud portage. And then we went all the way up to uh, Cherokee in the frost, and I'm currently uh, currently right here. So from here all the way up to here. So it's a pretty long day. Now it took about seven hours or so. Anyway, I think we might just have some food. Maybe get the fire going again if we get to calm down a little bit. Uh, otherwise, I might just go to bed a little early. Don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow yet or how far I'm going to go. I'll have to figure that out. I'll play it by ear. There is a stop off on the Frost River about two, three hours down the road. Kind of want to go a little farther than that, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. So um, Everything went good today. Got real lucky with the wind. The wind's kicked up now, though. It's kind of annoying with the fire, but... Um, Shoulders are a little sore, but that's about it. Other than that, I'm uh, relatively unscathed. Oh, well, made it to the Frost River about 10 o'clock in the morning. There's where it uh, dumps into. Oh, man, let's get this up. There it is, right over there. There's a portage back over there. I just came over here to take a look at the river. Uh, now we're on the Frost River, came from Frost Lake. Uh, Last night, slept about, I went to bed about 8.30, got up at uh, around 7 or so. Got on the water at 9 o'clock. Uh, the portage here is 130 rods. I think it's the longest one of the day, probably, unless I go all the way to Hub. But uh, that wasn't too bad. I think I carried most of it. Then I hit a crossing, so I dropped my pack down. Um, but other than that, I think today, a lot of beaver dam pullovers, a lot of small portages, nothing too long. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, saw one other set of canoe this morning. I don't know when they came in there on Frost Lake. Uh, they hadn't left by the time I left, so I don't know how long they're staying. But other than that, haven't seen a lot of people. It's quiet, no mosquitoes yet, knock on wood. Weather's gorgeous again today. Gotta put some sunscreen on here before too long. But anyway, we'll see how this goes. I don't know where I'm gonna stop yet. There is a drop off point at Baloney Lake, probably about two hours away, but I probably wanna go farther than that today. 
But once you pass Baloney, then you got another, you know, I don't know, maybe four or five hours or so to get to there. And then there's a one campsite at the end that's occupied, then you're in trouble. But uh, we'll see. So there's the second portage there. I was able to skip the first one. There, you see the flat water way up there. And then, problem out here is this is the landing right here. It's not a very good landing. Ugh, I don't know where I'm gonna put the canoe at, but I'll try and get in there. Bunch of uh, sharp, slippery rocks down there. But uh, I'll figure it out. Well, this is uh, one portage away from Chaser Lake. Pretty cool waterfall, about the biggest drop we've seen so far. Uh, so far, everything's gone good. I've encountered like three beaver dams, but I've been able to paddle right over them. No moose yet. Did see some wolf poo or scat. It's kind of tricky area to walk through there. Um, all these portages are a little tricky footing, but they're only like five, five to 15 rods so far. Next one's a 30 rod into Chase Lake and then Chase Lake drops off to Baloney. I'm not gonna stop there, there's one campsite there. I'm gonna keep going. I uh, thought about doing it, just having an easy day, but uh, things have been going pretty good so far, so we'll see. Uh, maybe about a five minute paddle up to uh, Chase Lake or so. There's a waterfall from the other end. But yeah, so far so good. Uh, let's see, it's uh, 11.30 almost, so I've been at it about two hours since I left Frost. Um, so that includes the paddle and the long portage, so doing pretty good so far. So Bologna, you'd probably reach in at least three hours or so, probably a little sooner than that, two and a half, right? All right, let's keep going. This is kind of what it looks like out here. Pretty much been the same the whole time. No noise except for rapids here and there. No real current either. You'd think there would be with the drop-offs and everything, but nothing. It's actually, I'm actually going into the wind, but I mean, there's hardly any wind, but maybe five miles an hour, but. You sit still, you'll kind of just stay in one spot. Pretty easy to get, or pretty hard to get lost up here. Just kind of going one direction. Well, not one direction, but just follow the river. All the porridges are obvious. And here comes the beaver dam that I probably won't be able to paddle through. Nope. All right, I gotta find a way through this thing. The problem with these things is it's hard to uh, get your footing. You know, step it out, something that's higher than you out of a canoe. Maybe over that side I can push on through. A little bit of a rock. I got a brand new one on a canoe. Won't be brand new anymore after this trip, let's put it that way. I've already got some pretty healthy scratches in it. Not my sawbills, but even still, I don't like to. Let's see if I can go through this here. Oh, 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 we made it, we made it, oh, no, rock, rock, rock. Ah, shoot, we made it through the beaver dam. Just hit a rock right at the end. Little kippy situation. Honestly, if I don't swap the canoe today, I'll be shocked. Not paddling out in the open, but just uh, getting in and out. It's just been terrible footing every place. But hopefully I don't do it with at least a pack in here. If I do it, hopefully the pack's out already. But it won't be, I guess. The pack will be in there. Um, but 
Iron right, out. That's good. I made it through another beaver dam. I think that's three now I went through. So, anyway. On to the next portage somewhere. I doubt that was my 30 rod. You can see there's walk arounds and all these beaver dams, but the water was a foot or two lower. Um, there are several porges I've passed. They're not port. They aren't even on the map, but you can tell where people have walked. <sighs> it's nice out here. Nice and quiet. See something black over there. I don't think it's an animal though. Let's we'll see when we get closer. So here's the slope down in the Pencil Lake. I came down through this lake so I had some roots to support me. But it's a pretty rough. Good news is it's a gravel landing where I'm standing only about ankle deep or so. So that's kind of surprising. I thought it'd be steeper down here. But anyway, got paddle across Pencil, 65 rotter. I'll probably get some lunch after that. Here is uh, Pencil Lake. So I don't know, I'm not halfway done distance wise, but maybe time wise, I'm not sure. They finally, later on you get some uh, longer paddles, but uh, so far it's been paddle five minutes to get out. So I've spent probably more time unloading and loading a canoe than, uh, than actually paddling or, or, uh, or walking for that matter. But anyway, on our way. Well, I'm on the Pencil Lake Portage. I had a little bit of trouble finding it. I stopped here to have lunch because it's such a nice waterfall. But my map and my GPS shows on the north side of the river. It's actually on the south side of the river. I don't count it getting lost if my maps are wrong. But anyway, you know, it took me about 10 minutes. But crossing this little area right here, you can see the current down here. I just walked across it with the canoe. And man, it's slippery too. So I think the portage is actually back there, like over that hill. But I found that there's another path here. I'm not the first guy that's done this. And there was a path over on that side too, but it quickly runs out. So anyway, uh, 65 rotter and then that should be it for the long portage of the day. Well, just got on the Pencil Lake portage. And that should be it for the long ones of the day. Just got like a five, 15, 10, maybe four of them or something like that along the way. Um, I think I'll probably stay at that. I think it's Afton Lake or something or Fenty. I can't remember the name of it, but Otherwise, you got it on the hub and it's 340 rod down to there, and I don't feel like doing that tonight. Um, now we're in moose country. The river's narrow, really narrowed out. I saw probably four moose poo in that on that portage. Uh, but yeah, anyway, my shoulders are about done. I'm prepping for this trip, I got uh, two and a half year old twins. So I'd, uh, my son likes to watch me play Mario Kart on the Wii. So I'd sit there and wear the pack around the house and play Mario Kart with them. He'd actually, if he saw the pack, he'd actually point at it and tell me to go put it on and play Mario Kart. But obviously I didn't, uh, I didn't do enough of it. <sighs> Cause yeah, they're about done. Here's what I'm looking at out here. It looks nice. River's a lot narrower now. No more lakes until the end of it. Let's see, I got a couple more, maybe a couple more hours to go. But I'm not sure. We'll see. I think it's only, yeah, I mean, I'm at least halfway um, distance wise. And then, depending on how the portages are, you know. I never know with those if they're easy or hard. If there's a lot of beaver dams too, I think a beaver dam could really mess up a river this wide. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Seems like there's a little bit of a current now too, but it might go away eventually. But got a slight current, and the reeds are all bent over downstream, so they weren't like that uh, before. So I guess you'd call this the lower section. That back there would be the upper section. But yeah, like I said, no more big lakes. Just all little river here now. And I'm hoping to see a moose, but nothing yet. Every corner I go around, I kind of sneak around it. I snuck down that portage, thinking maybe, maybe, maybe. Now the river turns hard left. Nothing over there, no moose. God, if I was a moose, I'd just be standing in the stream today. It's hot out, it's probably 75 or so. Um, that's another thing, I'm kind of getting exhausted from that. If it was 60, it'd be a lot easier, but I'm drinking all I can, you know. I probably had like four analogy and stay already. But, uh, 
All right, I'm gonna keep paddling. Well, I made it to camp on uh, Alton Lake. Took about seven hours to get here. I've been here for a couple hours, just kind of hanging out, relaxing. Um, it's not a terrible campsite. It's kind of be bad for uh, uh, for more than a couple people. There's only like really one decent tent pad. The other one's back in the woods a little ways, but really good views and everything. You can see there, I got all my stuff on a rock over there. It's kind of nice. Gonna get the tent set up. Maybe not much firewood either. It's kind of a lot of uh, brush behind me. I've been hearing grouse and everything, uh, but uh, yeah, not a lot of dead standing wood here. Now you can see over here, there is the Frost River where it comes out at, right to the left of those stand of evergreens way out there. But yeah, all in all, pretty good day. Um, after Pencil Lake, it got a little frustrating. My math from 07, um, so it's not accurate. It doesn't matter their port about the same amount of port it's just it didn't really matter where they were i guess but there was a couple in a row where it was a beaver dam pull one was a beaver dam pull over a 10 foot paddle i couldn't walk the canoe because it was way too deep and then a uh like a five rod portage so <laughs> it's kind of uh gets a little frustrating at some point but just unloading and loading the canoe all day but uh other than that yeah it wasn't too bad um no moose the lower half does get a lot more remote um, it gets a lot more grown in too, so even if there were moose, I don't know if you'd be able to see them. Real windy, and the other thing was too, I just kind of set my pack in a wide part of the canoe. Because um, I thought the porridge was coming up right away, I should have set up front, I didn't have a lot of turning um, ability, because I, I had all the way too far back, and it was, it was the wind was right down my, right out of the west today, so almost right in my face the whole way, so the wind kind of pushed me around a little bit. But other than that, Mater, uh, I know Sawbill's website says this day you go all the way to Hub. <sighs> That's a lot. You got one more 10 rod port, then a 340 rod port to Hub. Um, if you can do that, well, good for you. I mean, I could do it, there's just, I'd have zero desire to do it. You know, if someone else were to come along tonight and they're hoping to get this campsite, I mean, I'd definitely let them stay here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want them to push on the Hub, but I'm gonna go try and find some firewood. There's some around here. I may just have a little fire later once the sun goes down. The sun will go down pretty early because I got these high trees behind me. So uh, you can see it back there. So uh, I did have to put on bug spray too, first time today. A lot of ants around here as well, but uh, other than that, they haven't been bothering me since I put on the spray. But, but yeah, anyway, uh, tomorrow I'll probably do a 340 rod down to Hub. That's just a little over a mile. Another like 100 rod into Masaba. I may just camp on Masaba and then try my hand at a little fishing. I can't really fish with a solo canoe unless I got my pack still in there. So tomorrow I'm gonna leave my pack, maybe just throw my tent out on a campsite I find. And then uh, just uh, paddle around. It's really hard to paddle in the wind without uh, any, any weight up front. But uh, yeah, that's about it for tonight. Maybe cook some uh, food, have a little hot chocolate. I got, I brought a bunch. All right. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. Just uh, this found this pine. I'm almost afraid to burn it. It's so red. Nice and fat wood. I already shaved off some, but you just take the back of your knife and make some more shavings, you know. And then, I mean, this stuff will put birch bark to shame. Take your fire steel and that's it. I put some shavings in there too. That's just not all the all the stuff. This is on birch bark too, but. Yeah, it's just crazy how uh, how red this stuff is and resinous. You can, when you take it out, you can you can smell it. Uh, it smells like turpentine, but I mean, you don't even need a fire. You don't even need shaving. You probably take a lighter of this stuff and it'll go up like crazy. It might need to be a little thinner. But anyway, I thought that was kind of cool to find that out here. I never found it like that. Well, I never seen it that red. I wasn't even looking for it. I was just cutting down some pine, but a couple branches. But anyway. Now the birch bark's going, but see how well that works.